Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Pro Wrestling Report, the worldwide phenomenon known as the Pro Wrestling Report. Myself and Meathead will talk to you about some changes in TNA. This Sunday's New Year's Revolution pay-per-view, Fan of the Week, Hits and Misses, News and Views, all coming up in just a few moments right here on the Pro Wrestling Report. I'm not over 300 pounds, so I'm feeling great because I still got a job. It is the international phenomenon known as the Pro Wrestling Report. Thank you for is joining that? us for this week, December the 6th. Nope, it's the 5th, 2007. How was your New Year's? And it's and January, and too, how, not December. Where and how did you celebrate? Well, here in January, we celebrated things a little differently. Notice I like to I do that so you can correct me and make yourself look good. Cause, Notice you know, I do that to you. I'm the star, you're the, you know. <laughs> Notice I do that to young Democrat here. New Year's Eve, for me, was um, it was kind of boring. Um, there wasn't a lot of Jerry Springer type drama for me. There was the so you weren't normal. on the south side of Milwaukee here. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not to say I wasn't out touching the ladies. We hope that your New Year's was safe and pleasurable for you. <laughs> this is the Pro Wrestling Report. Let's hit it off with our top story, ladies and gentlemen. And this week's top story comes from Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. And there is lots of changes in TNA. Specifically, Meathead, they are no longer covering some of the financial things that they covered in the past for their performers, their wrestling stars, if you will, such as hotel fees and car rental costs. As you know, mm. this uh, is similar to what WWE already does. The wrestlers have to pay for their own ways. And that's why you see four wrestlers to a car. And uh, now TNA taking uh, that same philosophy for all performers but the announcers, the bookers, and the production because those staff. Because guys, those guys are company employees. Basically, the wrestlers are private contractors. Independent contractors. Private, independent. Call it what you will, but they're still contractors. And therefore, as a contractor, you're asked to incur all your costs, but then you're able to write all that stuff off. And seeing as these are... writing it off. Seeing as... This is a new thing for TNA, and TNA has, you know, obviously they tape once a month, twice on a big month when they have a pay-per-view, which is every month now, so twice a month. Uh, but what does this do potentially to morale in the locker room with the boys who some say only make, in some cases, 500 to 1000 bucks per show? I don't know. Depending on how many times they're using them per show, or is it per appearance I believe it's per appearance. Show. You know, so if you're uh, at a month's worth of tapings and you show up four times, I hope you're getting paid, you know, the 2000 or 3000 whatever it is. Um, you know, I, I don't really know what it says. Um, a lot of wrestlers do seem to move to Florida anyways because of the tax situation down there. There's no taxes. Yeah, is it no payroll tax or no state tax? I think it's no state tax. I believe it's no state tax. Because of uh, Disney World down there supplying so much money into the economy. That damn rat. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why a lot of wrestlers do stay down there. And a lot of wrestlers that used to stay in Canada all happen to move to Florida as well. But you know what? That also, if they're going to do this, if TNA is going to do this to the wrestlers or the independent contractors, they should be allowed to expand their booking. Their, and their yes, individual there was booking. that story a couple of months back about how TNA wanted to take control of, of their booking. the bookings. And we haven't heard any word on whether or not that policy is going to change, but that's an excellent point because now the revenue stream is less for those performers. Now, keep in mind, we're talking... You know, I guess the shuttle from the airport to the uh, to the Universal Studios where the arena is is about twenty bucks, and uh, you can get a hotel for seventy, eighty bucks a night. So it's you not know, a substantial that's not a, amount of that's money. That's not really the big deal. I think it's the fact that um, to fly them in, say if they are, you know, East Coast talent, if they're West Coast talent, if they're Midwest talent. It's East Coast West Coast thing, huh? Yeah. And uh, death, death Row and what was it? Uh, death Row and um, it was uh, Biggie's uh, Puff Daddy's. Um, P. Diddy. P. Diddly Ding Dong, whatever his name was. And then, and, uh, then, then uh, they're not going to work her anymore. That's yeah. what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, carry on. It's not really a big deal. You know what? If TNA wanted to, they could buy a bus and just like circa WCW in 1994, bus them all in. Maybe when Triple H is done with his tour bus, they can, they can loan it to. Didn't UK they blow out. that up a handful of years ago? Yeah, that was a wrestling angle. Oh. Another big situation is, as we've told you, Conan is subject to surgery. 
He's got kidney failure. <laughs> he's not subject to it. He's going to have it. Kidney failure. He may either need them replaced or worked on. We don't know for sure. But the rumored price of that operation is about $100,000 if he does it here, thirty five dollars if he does it in Mexico. Yeah, with Dr. Nick Riviera. Who may Hi, or Dr. may not Nick. be a doctor. <laughs> Hi, Conan. The cost will not be covered by TNA. Now, WWE at times has paid for medical procedures for depending their athletes. Depending on the talent. Depending, no, exactly, depending on the talent. Depending on the structure of the contract. Mm -hmm. Depending, I mean, is Conan a TNA employee or is he an independent contractor? And that's, that's the question. And that's I, something Conan and TNA know. And guys like us and guys like you can speculate on, but we don't really know the absolute truth. One thing that is true is he is the head booker for the AAA organization in Puerto Rico, and they have said that they will run several fundraising shows to help uh, Conan pay for his procedure. Now, Conan's been around for a long time, including having a lucrative WCW contract. Maybe he wasn't one of those smart wrestlers who put a ton of change away to uh, No, I think live he was living, living the bling-bling life. Oh, the rock star life. If the bling will. bling rock star life. Uh, he was the one that had his own rap video on WCW Nitro that had disco spoof the next week. What does this tell the rest of the boys? What does this tell the rest of the workers for TNA? Manage your money. That's no, what it about, tells about the fact that they won't cover the injury. Does it say that TNA is less supportive of the workers than thought no. earlier? Or is this simply business as usual for professional I wrestling? I think it's business as usual for professional wrestling. And when it happened in WCW, they were milking the teat of WCW until it was dry. I'm sorry, what? They were. They were milked. And it is dry. And it, until, <laughs> it was milked until it was dry. TNA started off with, obviously, WCW people running it. I mean, let's be quite honest about it. Uh, Donna Dixon or Dixie Carter, Dixie Carter or whatever her name is. She may not have Got to be from, confused with uh, the woman from uh, Designing Women. Yeah. Uh, Donna Dixon or whatever her name is. Um, they're going to try to run this a little bit better. They're going to try to do smart business moves. And obviously, if you sign an independent contracting contract, well, that means an independent contract contract, that means that they also have the right to jump whenever they want if they're independent contractors. If. If. Again, we speculate. Um, TNA, I wouldn't call them, there's a lot of buzz on the interweb about, uh... And the internet. About them cutting back and, you know, no longer treating the people, uh, as good as they did. But, you know, it, again, I, it seems to me like it's just standard fare for a wrestling organization. Now, whether that sure. makes it right or wrong is not what I'm saying, but it just seems to be fairly standard. And as TNA grows, it's smarter to make these calls now than later, in my opinion. I think so. Let's move on to the news and views. Ladies and gentlemen, our first story, TNA locked down the pay-per-view schedule for April 15th, just after WrestleMania 23, is now stronger to, uh, looks to be stronger of a possibility to appear in either Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or Chicago, Illinois, at a venue in St. Louis that reportedly did not work out uh, due to, I believe it was blood, was not allowed in the venue, and it is an all-steel cage pay-per-view. So those two won't get along so well. Yeah, blood and steel cage, not so much. However, the show may end up staying in Chicago. Question Meathead. I'm Would sorry, I go? Staying in Orlando. Yeah. Staying, I'd go to staying Chicago. in Orlando. Question Meathead. Does TNA need to continue taking these shows on the road, or should they play it smart and know that they've got a home base in Orlando to do these pay-per-view shows? Business would tell you to keep all the shows in one building. Less cost. You've already got the set built. My God, man, it'll take 30 minutes just to put up the new banners. Business would tell you that you should stay in there. But to expand your business, you need to move the show around. I say just move the pay-per-views around and keep the house shows and the TV tapings in one building. Uh, TNA does have a house show scheduled for, I believe, Birmingham, Alabama, of all places. And, uh, that Maybe is, they I struck up a January good deal 20. with a cheap building. Perhaps, perhaps, or a cheap um, TNA also has moved channels in the United Kingdom, no longer on the wrestling channel Fight Network. They have moved to Bravo 2, which is not a sister station of Bravo here in the States. Which That's good, because features I... Top Chef and such. Uh, but it is the Kick it up a notch. Bam! You watch Top Chef? No, I just wanted to say that. Um, the, that is, uh, is that really TV? from that? I have no idea. Oh, neither do I. <laughs> that, can I get this sentence out, and then Ooh. you can do whatever you want? Um... The uh, <laughs> Bravo 2 over in the UK is the Spike TV United States equivalent, uh, seemingly more skewed towards males 
and uh, where TNA will be debuting, I believe, this week on in the United Kingdom. Kicking it up for the man. Bam! I just made that one up. I knew I was going to say something, but I didn't know what it was going to be. Did you catch Raw this past Monday night? Catch Raw. What did you everyone. think of the match? The opening contest, John Cena, the WWE champion, going up against Kevin Federline, K-Fed. K-Fed wins the match due to outside interference by Umaga. Come on. It sucked. Did it suck worse than David Arquette becoming WCW champion? Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm thinking about it. The, ma the match of David Arquette versus Diamond Dallas Page versus Jeff Jarrett, I think. I it don't was. even know. I, like think, I, it was, I it. think it was uh, Arquette versus Jarrett with interference by DDP. The match was better because it was a wrestling match. What the let me, David Arquette? Let me, let me quote. Sh there was wrestling maneuvers and wrestling spots in that match. There's his maneuver. Stop. If you ask for my opinion, you're going to get it. All right, go. In the match between Arquette and Jarrett for the title, there was wrestling spots and wrestling maneuvers. This crap that we just had with Kevin Federline and John Cena didn't have anything. And it wasn't there for anything but to put over Umaga and John Cena. Isn't that the goal with a pay-per-view coming up this Sunday, New Year's Revolution, which we'll talk more about later in this you're program? You're going to hype this Kevin Federline dork for no, no, no. two months? Just to put over something else? They sold out the uh, arena in Miami. That yeah, wasn't the what The highest sold rating it since the summer on the program. No, that's not what did it. That is what not What did it? it? Oh, my God. That is not it at all. You're in denial. No, no, no step no. one. No, no. I know where denial is. It's a river in Egypt. I am not in denial. <laughs> did you expect K-Fed to win the match? Yes, absolutely. You what? Absolutely. You when what? It, when it became a no-disqualification match... Not for the title. Just a reminder. When it was not for the title and it was no DQ, Umaga's going to come out. They're going to call Ooh, a scene in the match. Umaga. And Kevin Federline's going to go, huh? Me? Me? One, two, three. How could you not see that coming? K-Fed the character. Your take on it after this week's show. Get rid of it. K-Fed said to be done with WWE. Thank his commitments you. have been met. However, K-Fed getting a lot of respect for the boys in the back. And by the way, his name is Kevin Federline, not K-Crap or K-Fed or whatever he keeps saying. My God! K-Fed! 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 Crap. K-Fed may indeed be back on WWE TV, and I, for one, wouldn't mind seeing him again. I think he's a great character. He is truly hated, much like an Eric Bischoff, who is truly hated, I thought about thus that. making him a good heel. I, th I thought about that. Because Jeff Jarrett is truly hated, but that doesn't make him a good heel. I thought about that. As he was walking along ringside, I thought about a line that Damien gave me once. This is real heat. It's hate heat. The checks heat. aren't ready yet? This is real heat. It's hate heat. I don't hate you because you're in wrestling, Kevin. I hate you because I hate you. Get it right. Maybe K-Fed's jersey should say... Kevin Fedelon! K-Fed! K-Fed! Stacey Keebler, you remember her? Yeah, I still love her. She was on Dancing with the Stars and is still with a great relationship with the ABC television network, as she will be on the ABC show titled What About Brian? Never heard of it. Uh, for February and March on Monday nights. Hmm. Also a starring role in the George Lopez show uh, coming up on January 31st and February 21st. So Stacey Keebler, uh, unlike a China or a Sable, all over the mainstream uh, television Networks Here's now, the thing about which China was the goal and of Sable. Those two divas who left in the Here's past. the thing about China and Sable. They don't have it here. They never Sable didn't? No. No, 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 no. They didn't have it here. Stacey's Not even when she few. was on this very program? Uh, she, no. She had it here, but not here. Stacy's got it right here. stacy has got it. Does she also have legs? Oh, yes. Hmm. But honestly, the reason Stacy's able to cross, she's got it here. She's an all-American looking girl. Tune in to see the all-American looking girl on the ABC network, as we said, coming up on Mondays in February and March. Claudio Castagnoli, uh, one of the nominees for the PWR Honors, uh, has a, had a developmental deal with WWE, was supposed to be reporting to DSW, Deep South Wrestling, and had that deal reportedly canceled due to some visa issues. Castagnoli mm. from Switzerland, and uh, seemingly... Bit of a confusion between him 
and uh, Simon Dean, who is the uh, one of the bookers who was rallying for Claudio to be brought over to WWE, and uh, thus the end result is uh, the visa didn't go so well, and Claudio now missed his window. Missed his window. Perhaps will be called back. Who knows? But certainly, at least we get the joy of still seeing him on Ring of Honor and in the independent circuits. True. You know, I I like Simon Dean. I don't know how you feel about it, but his gimmick after a while, I was getting used to it. He was there to put over other talent. Simon Dean or Dean Douglas? Oh no, Simon Dean. Dean Douglas was Simon Dean's better than Dean Douglas. Simon Dean. The paddle. No, no, a Simon Dean with the segue. <laughs> And then he came out with a big picture of his head on his back. How can you not like that? I love double double E. I don't love Igor. Whatever. Vladimir Kozlov is his stage name. He's already been working house shows with WWE, teaming up with Val Venus, I believe. And as you saw on WWE.com, it has been announced that Vladdy will be uh, seeking a WWE contract. I'm sorry, a double double E contract. I like the character. It, I think it's got some potential. Maybe it really have hit, to, here it is, Booker Nelson coming out right here. They get him to be the so performer. you've gone from Damian Nelson to Mark Nelson to Booker Nelson. His manager is none other than Nikolai Volkov. Instant heat. Come out singing the Russian the Russian national anthem. The only way they can get away with that is if Nikolai's involved or Boris Boris Yeltsin, I believe. Boris Yeltsin was Kolov. the man, president. Of, Boris Koloff, <laughs> Boris Yeltsin, and he's got that little Sorry. thing on his I had head. my political hat on yeah. for a minute there. Um, you ever done cocaine? No. No. Oh. Barack Obama, apparently. There's yeah. Some, uh, that's your next president, problem. isn't There's going to be some problems there. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll take care of that. I don't like cocaine. I'm going to move to the UK. Hold on, hold on. Seriously. I, I don't like cocaine, but I like the smell. I like Tony oh. Blair. I don't know if he's gone yet, but I know he's going to be gone soon. I don't soon, like but... cocaine, but I like the smell. Anyway, Kozlov, I think, if they did that matching and they did that pairing... That would be instant heat in the way to go. However, I think that even without that, he's got great potential in WWE. And uh, double double E, double, double he e. would have to go to SmackDown. Smacky wacky? Why is that? Because he wouldn't fit with the world. Why are you always putting people on SmackDown? Because <laughs> Why are you always saying show? he would have to go to SmackDown? Oh, I don't see him doing anything but SmackDown. It's, oh, must be another SmackDown star. What is this all about? Didn't you see Armageddon? You know SmackDown is back up there. They are brought, JBL on the stick. King Booker, Batista's back, your man, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, you know what? Kennedy is a big fish in a small pond right now. He really is, unfortunately. He sold his house, but the new season of Hogan Knows Best is debuting this week on Video Hits 1, VH1, here in the States. And uh, apparently his best friend, Brian Nasty Boy Knobs, uh, will be uh, part of that show. What or happened to sag? his? What happened? Jerry uh, Sags, Brian. Uh, yeah. What happened to uh, his old best friend, Brutus the Barber Beefcake? Is he? Where is Brutai? Ed Leslie. Where is Brutai? When he became the disciple, because yeah. he no, no, no. After movie? we don't talk about anything Brutus did before he left. After he left WWE, I do. Just remember the heart. The the uh, rockers broke up in the barber shop. Remember that? It was yes, heinous the heinous maneuver when Marty Jannetty was thrown through the plate glass through the window. The plate glass, not tempered plate glass window. And, oh my God. It's like, which was better? All right, Nate. Brother Love Show, Barber Shot, or The Snake Pit? You can't throw Piper's Pit. I did not there. throw I'm Piper's Pit. I'm glad you did that because There's Piper's no Pit would win right away. There's no comparison. So I have to choose between The Barber Shop, The Snake Pit, or Brother Love. I love no The Snake Pit. The character. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, now. No, I love The Brother Love Show. But I did that just to swerve you. It wasn't my fault. Gene Snitsky. Rumored to be getting repackaged and sent over to the failing organization, in my opinion, after especially after this week's show, um, ECW. Apparently, ECW is going to be full of big guys now. Snitsky and ECW. Snitsky, it wasn't my fault. Great character, has potential, won't go any higher than he's he is, not, in my opinion. I don't on think Raw. he's on the roids anymore. And you can tell. Did you know he was on the roids before? Are you alleging that he was on the steroids? Have you guys seen his back? What is your definition of is? The back knee. Have you seen it? Look again. Meathead's making some assumptions here. We apologize to those of you who are watching this show who are currently On exercising the their right to use steroids. There is no right because it is illegal in the States here. Uh, so maybe you across you the caught. pond. Yeah. Maybe you across the pond are using them and maybe it's legal. Robert here. Conway. How about that 12 second match? Being defeated by. I'm 
You know, I forget. My memory's a little cloudy. <laughs> Rob Conway had a match. He came out. He's going to make that his big coming out and, and had a match. And Apparently he's he, going to SmackDown, he too. He wrestled. Oh, some, it must have been the Intercontinental Champion. Some mid card Jeffrey Hardy. Some who pinned jumper. him in about 12 seconds. Out comes Daddy. Vince McMahon's back in Miami, as they call it. And, uh... Me on me? Miami. 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 Me on me? Miami. And uh, not only declares war against <laughs> the Donald, which he does have a right to that claim. Because remember, it was 1997 okay, or 8 when Vince started the year of fires. It was with Stone Cold. I believe it was Judgment Day 98 at the Rosemount Horizon in Chicago, Illinois. Get that screen up! Get that screen up! Austin, you're fired! He was the referee of what match? Who Austin was? Yes, at Judgment Day 98. The referee King stunned Taker. both. Very good, Meathead. Ding, 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 ding. And you know who won that match? Who that? It was Kane. Didn't he have the belt for one night? I don't believe that's when He won the belt at King of the Ring 98 uh, after the Hell in a Cell match. And then Austin took it back the next night. Yeah, but Raw. he did uh, ref the Undertaker-Kane match. And he got fired. But anyways, um, Robert Conway. I l always liked Robert Conway's character. Here comes loud resistance. That's the rumor. Back to SmackDown along with his friend, Rene Sylvain. Uh, Sylvain Granier. And uh, rumor has it that we'll see the reformation of La Resistance. Some of the best entrance music in the history of wrestling, in my opinion. It was a very newsy. Breaking news. Yeah. New Year's Revolution is this Sunday, Meathead. Coming to you live on pay-per-view from Kansas City, Missouri. The matches. Let's talk about them. Going from the bottom of the card, working our way up to six Jeff matches Hardy. that have been announced so far. Carlito will go one on one with Chris Matthews. No, no, no. And the bottom of the card is Jeff Hardy. Running feuds in WWE right now. Carlito versus Masters in a match that the result will mean little to nothing. And you know what? To be honest with you, the feud actually has already gone over a year. It has gone over a year for sure. Because yes. it, remember New Year's Revolution last year, uh, it was Carlito who pinned Masters in the in Elimination, the elimination chamber. chamber. Pick a winner in that one. Carlito well, I thought we were talking about the bottom of the card, because that should be Hardy. Carlito, I am listing him as they were listed on WWE.com. Boy. <laughs> Between Carlito and Masters, who Carlito needs to start calling Meathead again, because I always got a tiny little kick out of that. What are you trying to be, a Meathead? Um, it's got to be Carlito. And then it's the prodigy, Kenny Dykstra, taking on the old RV, Ric <laughs> Flair. <laughs> Obviously, it's Kenny Dykstra. Now, what was it a pay-per-view or was it on Raw where we saw this match before, a couple of months back? Oh, it was on Raw. Uh, expect Kenny to win that match. However, uh, Ric Flair was Kenny a receipt. Yeah, and, he does. Uh, he, Kenny's gotten a lot of pins and, a lot, and, and has been, quite frankly, but punking out again, Ric Flair. But, but Ric then Flair. again, Ric Flair hasn't cashed in on all his receipts throughout wrestling either, doesn't he? Still a Russo one? Well... Ric Flair, as we know, will do anything, especially for the young talent, to get them over. Which and makes us still Ric Flair fans, but honestly, Rick, you need to wrestle with the shirt on again. Yeah. Um, winner in that match, you said Kenny, I said Kenny, we're done. Women's championship will be on the line when Victoria takes on Mickey James. In Mickey James, who is years, seeing Kenny Dykstra. In the last two years, and Kenny's seen the roast beef. In the last two years. Does he go to Arby's? I thought that was putty. Yeah, okay, Mickey, R.B. James, whatever you want to call her. In the last uh, two years, the women's matches mean something. It all goes and back it, to that Trish-Mickey match at WrestleMania 20. No, it goes two. back before that. It goes back to the buildup. I mean, the literally six- to seven-month buildup before that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Victoria, again, not so much here, but she wow, is, the she, tattoo music. is she here again? Oh. Bravo. I like me a thicker woman like that. Mm. Will Victoria walk out of that match the new women's champion? Absolutely not. Mickey James, I vote Victoria just because she's gotten so much more heat, and then we can carry it into WrestleMania. Otherwise, again, who's making it a face at WrestleMania? I, I, I guess, again, following the face chasing the title philosophy. For the Intercontinental Championship, the very, very, very impressive Johnny Nitro will go one on one with Jeff Hardy. I don't know if he's that impressive. I really don't feel compared to where Johnny Nitro Nitro's. was when he was Eric Bischoff's bitch. Johnny Money. Looking Nitro. at where he is now and the wrestling skill that he has now, I feel he is very, very, very impressive. I feel that he is athletically impressive, but I don't think his psychology, ring psychology. Are you jealous because of the Molina thing? No, not at all. 
it's okay to stare. Winner in that matchup for the Aaron Continental Championship. Unfortunately, it's going to be Jeff Hardy again. Ching. Really? Yeah. Nitro was IC champ for a while. Jeff Hardy's been IC champ for a long while. Then lost it and then got it back. Well, but the, the, just don't mind that. It's just, but it's going to be Hardy it's a again. Blip. All right, if you say so. Uh, that match to be held in a steel cage. I so believe. what was your pick? My pick? Oh, Jeff Hardy for sure. Okay. But I think there's an opportunity for Nitro to win. And if this feud is going to continue, remember we've got the Royal Rumble in less than a month. Yes, we and do. Uh, I think it'd be I think smart. that's where the title change happens. Well, I doubt we'll see an Intercontinental title match at the Rumble. Mm. I expect the SmackDown Heavy Rumble with some key Raw matches and then 10, 10, and 10 from ECW, Raw, and SmackDown. How can you put 10 Rumble? ECW guys in this match? Take the whole roster. And That's pass. what I'm saying. Out of those, out of the ECW 10 that you're supposed to have, nine of them you don't care about. And Rob right Max, Dam. Who is that? Remember from, I believe it was SummerSlam or Survivor Series, perhaps, when Shawn Michaels super kicked him, pinned him in the first couple seconds of the match? Who was that? Um, anyways, Hardy, Hardy, but I think Nitro might be able to win that matchup. RKO, Team RKO, Edge and Orton go up against DX for again. For the belts. For the belts. This time. The Tag Team Championships, yes. D-Generation X or Rated RKO in that contest. The belts An intense win. DX now, no <laughs> longer a comedy troupe. In case you didn't notice. Just saying. To, to the belts won't change speed. hands. All right. Thus meaning, who wins the match? Because that's what we do here is we pick a winner, Mr. Heenan. <laughs> the belts won't be changing hands, but it's probably going to be a DQ win for DX. Do we need to see more of this feud? Is it helping either party in this case? In this, at Don't this ask my opinion, but I'm going to tell it to you anyways. DX has to go. I'm done with DX. I've been done with DX. Since WrestleMania, I've been done with DX. In the main event, I think RKO wins that matchup, but in the main event, John Cena will defend the WWE Championship against the Samoan Bulldozer. Ooh, Ooh Maga. Maga. See, I warmed it up. Will Cena drop the strap in that matchup meet? No. I would tend to agree with you, however... New Year's Revolution last year was a huge surprise. Remember, Edge won the title after the Elimination Chamber. Money Cash in the bank. Money in the bank. Could we see another shocker at New no. Year's Revolution to build some momentum into WrestleMania 23? No. Don't hang and your head on that. Even knowing that the Royal Rumble, which could feature the big rematch, is less than a month away. Are you saying this only because, now that I think about it, as you've been talking, because I really don't listen to what you say, but as you've been talking, I thought... Because you worship what I say. No. SmackDown has no way out to build towards WrestleMania. The Royal Rumble on the way to WrestleMania. What does no Raw way. have to build towards WrestleMania? The Royal Rumble. No, they've got New Year's Revolution. True. True that. True that. Interesting. Uh, New Year's Revolution, as we said, this Sunday on pay-per-view. Send us your thoughts on that show after it is over at uh, 2 mail at pwrshow.com. We'll go ahead and read them on the editions of PWR Daily coming up in the future. Fan of the Week, Meathead. How about New Zealand? Yeah. This week's so. fan of the week is from Toranga, New Zealand. His name is Anthony, and he says this. Get ready to put your thinking cap on. It's underneath my fake hair. Good day, guys. Good day. Do you wear a toupee? No, this is, this is all real. It could be. This is all real. Right. Why'd your skin come up a little when you did that? Where'd that go? Uh, there are lots of submission moves used by wrestlers. Example, this STF, the crossface, the sharpshooter, etc. And the guys put into these moves all look to be in agony. Obviously, they're overreacting to the pain they're actually in. But how many of these submission moves are actually painful and to what degree? You know Again, that's from Anthony in New Zealand. You know what's odd is the submission moves that really hurt and that really can be uh, uh, painful and damaging are the ones that they play down in the WWE. Uh, arm bar. What about the crossface chicken wing, which I've been in, courtesy of Mr. Bob Backlund. And uh, that soul bitch hurts. Yeah, but the arm bar hurts. Uh, put on by, say, a Navy SEAL. I or don't something see something along those lines. Some occasionally with the sharpshooter, you'll see somebody really peel back. I mean, really just lay, lean all their weight back, which think, clearly think has to put stress. Think Walls of Jericho, think um, uh, Texas Cloverleaf, think you know those particular moves. Has to put a tremendous amount of stress on the small of the back, and think you know, STFU actually. By, given by? Uh, that'd be John Cena. So uh, it's difficult to say, and I'm going to reverse that back to the fans, as Missy Misdemeanor Elliott would. 
and uh, <laughs> fix your thing, um, yeah. flip it in, yeah. Yeah. it's your flimmin' up plan. Um, go to the message board, send us your emails, most painful and devastating submission move that's out there today. Again, in opinions, because 99.9% .9 of us haven't been in these moves. Can I be the point one? I've been in the... You've been in the cross-face chicken wing. That was the same year I asked Sid to powerbomb me, and it didn't happen. No. Thank God. Because <laughs> he could have stabbed you with scissors. Anyways, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that email, Fan of the Week. Hits and misses. Hits from TV this past week. Let's start with the hits. Out of the park, KFED on Raw, WWE scoring a great deal of publicity from it, getting their highest rating since the summer, and really creating a buzz for the organization where they needed it to. Remember how many people scrutinized Mike Tyson? Now, I'm not comparing the two. What I'm simply saying is the mainstream media buzz is what they're going for, much like when Mike Tyson David Arquette became mm, champion of your mm, organization. Mm, 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 mm. Mike Tyson had the physical ailment. Nobody, but nobody, fears Kevin Federline physically. I think a lot of people fear another CD from him. <laughs> hey, no. The Degeneration X promo on Raw as well, I feel, really gave importance to the match coming up this Sunday at the pay-per-view. I would consider that a hit, even though there are those who indicate there was a shot taken at Kurt Angle by Shawn Michaels in that promo. You know, a lot of times, the internet wrestling smarts, if you will, and I'm referring to those with websites that have 75 million pop-ups for four sentences of uh, news, if you will. Or opinion. Yeah. Um, are, are trying to dig too deep into something that was said and looking for meaning in, in what was said. Now, I'm not saying that uh, it, it wasn't a shot on, uh, at Kurt Angle by Shawn Michaels when he was talking about, you know, the, the whatever the line was, seems jerking curtains at another organization. Um, because when Shawn Michaels wants to shoot, he will. Remember, at Raw, broadcast table, Bret Hart was mentioned. Camera goes dead on him. He says, who the hell is that? Some mid-carter? He will do it when he needs to do it, and you will know they're doing it when they do it. So I'm not saying whether it happened or not, but I think we're digging a little too deep into that promo. But I think the promo was great, and the new Sirius DX delivering what they need to deliver for this upcoming matchup against Edge and Orton. Well, then again, DX Revolution. is always going to get the top writer to write all their stuff for him. So. Uh, a couple of misses this week, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about it earlier, the ending of the ECW television show on Sunday. We did not talk week. about the ending of it, we but it was... We talked about that we were going to talk about it. Oh, we'll talk about it later. We we'll talked about it. That that's enough. A clothesline. A clothesline is enough to go off the air in silence because it's such a heinous act in extreme championship wrestling, where we've seen people thrown off of balconies through twenty tables, where we've seen people set on fire. Thumbtacks, women beat up. We've seen the most extreme from ECW. Now, I know this is a new We've ECW. We've seen a man get his back ripped open. I know this is the new ECW, and it's not necessarily extreme, but you do not go off the air trying to sell such an amazing move by a clothesline. Again, meathead. A clothesline. I honestly that watched the match this time, because I'm telling you, folks, I do look at ECW, but it's with the fast-forward button. I actually... Is that it? Is that it? you got to be kidding me. And I went back for the last spoken words, and that was it. Black Lesnar retains the title against RVD got in that go. matchup. Uh, he cut a promo earlier on in the night. Oh. I thought it was fairly miserable. Oh, my God. Could I do better? Probably not. But oh, I'm not Damon, on WWE, Damon, ACW National Damon, Television. Damon, don't sell yourself short on that one, because uh, I think you could. And I, I think you suck, but I really think you could. That was a nice shot right there. Horrible way to end the show. The second miss of the week was having both Sabu and Balls Mahoney job to relatively newcomers to ECW. You're just, in my opinion, WWE is burying more than six feet under the brand of ECW and are getting to a point where they won't be able to dig themselves out, in my opinion. I don't think they're acquiring new viewers. That's a I general, think, that's not your opinion, that's a general opinion. I don't think that they are retaining old viewers, and while they are doubling the audience of TNA as we, uh, each week... Is that the goal? There was someone on is the message the, board. Is that the goal? It's not the goal, but when you look at wrestling shows on TV each week, TNA is last compared to ECW, which is second to last. But there was someone on the message board who said maybe TNA needs to bring out a hardcore championship. And I think TNA could successfully do that and really put the nail in the coffin for ECW. 
I, don't, I can't even speak on it, dude. It's, you know what? ECW is supposed to be a distinctly different company slash brand. They went with the Tommy Dreamer interview. How many times have we seen that on Raw? And How many Smackdown? times has Tommy Dreamer had a broken neck, thigh, yeah. pinky toe, yet he still wrestled? A broken piece of fat. How do you break you know, fat? And, 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 and ECW, you know, the new breed is here. It's, it's an extreme revolution. Blah, 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 blah. WWE, you know if ECW is new and not supposed to be the old ECW, then stop pushing the old talent. Stop talking about the ECW veterans, the originals, if you will, if it's not the original ECW. There are so many problems with this brand right now that I think we're almost to a point of no return with ECW. You know what actually was entertaining? Had nothing to do with wrestling. Armstrong on commentary. Hey, that's pretty funny. Hey, that, guy, that referee is a good-looking guy. Look at that guy. His brother. It's his brother. <laughs> Uh, big problems over in ECW, in my opinion. Oh. I am liking Kevin Snitz Dorn, though. Snitsky's the hero. He'll save it all. Great Kali, allegedly uh, set for a huge push as well, which hopefully just means but we're going to see more of Sean Devari. In ECW, what does that mean? The and show I, is dead. I mean, it, it has no energy. It has no... It just... It, it, it needs... Did you hear test promo? They're literally... You could hear individual conversations in the yeah. crowd. Big hey, uh, Then this is what happened last week. We'd like to thank our over 400,000 viewers in 2006. 2007 promises to be uh, even more of a successful year. And as more viewers come on board, which is happening each and every day, we will continue to bring you content here on this very program. Del Digital Versatile Discs of Digital Blizzard Versatile Brawl discs. 2006 are now available. You can hop over to the Blizzard Brawl website at blizzardbrawl.com or on over to the PWR website, which you're probably already on for ordering information of those DVDs. That includes, it's a two-DVD set, which includes myself and me down on commentary from Friday night in Milwaukee, and then Saturday night out in Grafton. Two distinctly different shows, two great shows, and well worth picking up on DVD. And it also includes an exclusive interview with sensational Sherry Martell, including Frank Costantino Damian working the stick also, in the back. Damien also got his first kiss from a female. Uh, that is not completely accurate. <laughs> a female wrestler. Okay. Uh, some matches from that Blizzard Brawl show are available on YouTube. Become a subscriber to the Pro Wrestling Report channel, and you can find those videos a lot easier. We are still looking for a couple of people to join the PWR team. We're looking for a TNA and a SmackDown reporter. So uh, hop on over to the website, find out more information about how you can be a part of the team. And Meathead, with that being said, let's go into our top five. That's definitely It's not, not said on Fantasy Sports Weekly. It's actually said by another individual in another show. But I'm looking out for his best interest. Let's hop on over to Meathead's Top Fives, your Top Five Professional Wrestling Names and or Beings of the Week. And not the 2006 Top Fives, which you saw on the PWR Honors. Number five on my Top Five list is going to go out to Kevin Thorne, not because of the damage well, that he now. did. Not because of the damage that he did to Balls Mahoney's mouth, but because of his little snicky that he carries around with him with the big hoops. Ariel. Um, yeah, Areolas. I, areolas, exactly. Number five, Kevin Thorne, uh, Mordecai, if you will. Number four, come to my top five. The man didn't really wrestle within the last week, but he's still getting mentioned, so he's gonna be, he's gonna be brought out, and his name is, is the Boogeyman, and he's coming to get you. Don't forget, number four in the top five is the Boogeyman. <laughs> number three on my top five, we're gonna go over to the Raw side, and it's gonna go to Oh Maga who I'm liking more and more, and may be able to envision as a champion. Unfortunately, you see the Raw champion as a stronger, marketable champion than you do the SmackDown champion, so he might have to become champion on SmackDown before he becomes champion on Raw. There you go again. Number two on my top did five. it again. Number two on my top five list is going to be from the SmackDown side, and it's going to be. That's not my part. Well, I'll go. All hail. Oh, King I'm All sorry, hell. you caught me off guard. I thought it was going to be hell. that Kennedy guy. All, All hail, hell. King Booker! All hail, King Booker, number two. Good for you. Very good for you. I love Booker T. He's the man. And number King Booker. And number one on my top five list for this week. Number one, he's going to be back on the Raw side. And um, it's the WWE champion, John Cena. I'm sorry, a little louder so the microphone can pick you up there. WWE champion John Cena who still is being booked as a weak champion, in my opinion. Because you know what? This pay-per-view is led off by the great feud between DX and Team RKO. 
Oh, yeah, don't forget there's also a title match between Cena and Umaga. A well-built title match, in my opinion. But still, second tier. The definitive top five list, ladies and gentlemen, the one each of you clamor to the PWR show this week to see. And it goes as follows. Coming in at number five, ladies and gentlemen, is the WWE champion, John Cena, number one on Meathead's list, number five on mine. Deserves a lot more respect than he's getting, quite frankly, getting a lot more respect than he had gotten in the past. As Ironically, well. getting it from this panel, too. Who knew? Um, and number four, a man who wrestled yet again last week on Impact, and we did not see the Canadian Destroyer, which is even better because you get too much of a special effect, it's no longer a special effect. P.D. Williams, the good Canadian, if you will. And number three is formerly of the Spirit Squad. His name is Kingy Dykstra. <laughs> number two on my top five list, all hail King Bucca. And number one, ladies and gentlemen, for a, I, I'll call it a 12-second victory because there was no official time released over Robert Conway. It is the Intercontinental Champion. Let's well, so, so, real Hardy. quickly. Uh, and this is something you dropped on me last week, a uh, little knowledge. I Jeff, dropped the bomb on you. Jeff Hardy's Baby. intro music is public domain music. It's easily attainable by if you would, If you would have watched the Spike uh, Video Game Awards, many people came out to that music. It's very popular, and they probably knew that they were coming out to the Intercontinental no, Championship. No, they knew that they were coming out to an uh, Apple CD man. that has all the free songs on it. Apple Bites. Make sure you tune in to PWR Daily, myself and Frank Cosentino. You were going, okay, it's a call that Monday it's through Wednesday of next week. There will be no pro wrestling report next week. Uh, make sure you join back with us in two weeks. And uh, in the meantime, and the in-between time, thanks for tuning in, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time right here on the International Phenomenon known as the Pro Wrestling Report. Thanks a lot, folks. <laughs>